Hi guys, we're here for our Bible in a Year Challenge reading for December 14th, and that's going to be read from Jonah 3 through 4, Proverbs 25, and Matthew chapter 12. Okay, Jonah chapter 3. Jonah goes to Nineveh. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time, Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh, and deliver the message of judgment I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, Forty days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they decided to go without food and, food and wear a sackcloth to show their sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in sackcloth and sat on a heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. Not one, not even the animals, may eat or drink anything at all. Everyone is required to wear sackcloth and pray earnestly to God. Everyone must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will have pity on us and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. When God saw that they had put a stop to their evil ways, he had mercy on them and didn't carry out the destruction he had threatened. Chapter 4 Jonah's Anger at the Lord's Mercy this change of plans upset Jonah, and he became very angry, so he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew that you were a gracious and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. I knew how easily you could cancel your plans for destroying these people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive because nothing I predicted is going to happen. The Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry about this? Then Jonah went out to the east side of the city and made a shelter to sit under as he waited to see if anything would happen to the city. And the Lord God arranged for a leafy plant to grow there, and, and soon it spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head, shading him from the sun. This eased some of his discomfort, and Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But God also prepared a worm. The next morning at dawn, the worm ate through the stem of the plant so that it soon died and withered away. And as the sun grew hot, God sent a scorching east wind to blow on Jonah. The sun beat down on his head until he grew faint and wished to die. Death is certainly better than this, he exclaimed. Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, Jonah retorted, even angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You feel sorry about the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. And a plant is only at best short-lived. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? That is all for the book of Jonah. Now, Proverbs 25. More Proverbs of Solomon. These are more Proverbs of Solomon collected by the advisors of King Hezekiah of Judah. It is God's privilege to conceal things, and the king's privilege to discover them. No one can discover the height of heaven, the depth of the, of the earth, or all that goes on in the king's mind. Remove the dross from silver, and the sterling will be ready for the silversmith. Remove the wicked from the king's court, and his reign will be made secure by justice. Don't demand an audience with the king or push for a place among the great. It is better to wait for an invitation than to be sent to the end of the line publicly disgraced. Just because you see something, don't be in a hurry to go to court. You might go down before your neighbors in shameful defeat. So discuss the matter with them privately. Don't tell anyone else, or others may accuse you of gossip. Then you will never regain your good reputation. Timely advice is as lovely as golden apples in a silver basket. Valid criticism is as treasured by the one who heeds it as jewelry made from finest gold. Faithful messengers are as refreshing as snow in the heat of summer. They revive the spirit of their employer. A person who doesn't give a promised gift is like clouds and wind that don't bring rain. Patience can persuade a prince, and soft speech can crush strong opposition. Do you like honey? Don't eat too much of it or it will make you sick. Don't visit your neighbors too often or you will wear out your welcome. Telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an axe, wounding them with a sword, or shooting them with a sharp arrow. Putting confidence in an unreliable person is like chewing with a toothache or walking on a broken foot. Singing cheerful songs to a person whose heart is heavy is as bad as stealing someone's jacket in cold weather or rubbing salt in a wound. If your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. You will heap 
burning coals on their heads, and the Lord will reward you. As surely as a wind from the north brings grain, so a gossiping tongue causes anger. It is better to live alone in the corner of an attic than with a con contentious wife in a lovely home. Good news from afar is like cold water, water to the thirsty. If the godly compromise with the wicked, it is like polluting a fountain or muddying a spring. Just as it is not good to eat too much honey, it is not good for people to think about all the honors they deserve. A person without self-control is as defenseless as a city with broken down walls. In Matthew chapter 12. Controversy about the Sabbath. At about that time, Jesus was walking through some grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, so they began breaking off heads of wheat and eating the grain. Some Pharisees saw them do it and protested, Your disciples shouldn't be doing that. It's, it's against the law to work by harvesting grain on the Sabbath. But Jesus said to them, Haven't you ever read in the scriptures what King David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God and they ate the special bread reserved for the priests alone. That was breaking the law too. And haven't you ever read in the law of Moses that the priests on duty in the temple may work on the Sabbath? I tell you, there is one here who is even greater than the temple. But you would not have the, but you would not have condemned those who aren't guilty if you knew the meaning of this scripture. I want you to be merciful. I don't want your sacrifices. For I, the Son of Man, am master even on the Sabbath. Then he went over to the synagogue where he noticed a man with a deformed hand. The Pharisees asked Jesus, is it legal to work by healing on the Sabbath day? They were, of course, hoping he would say yes and they could bring charges against him. And he answered, If you had one sheep and it fell into a well on the Sabbath, wouldn't you get to work and pull it out? Of course you would. And how much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Yes, it is right to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Reach out your hand. The man reached out his hand and it became normal, just like the other one. Then the Pharisees called the meeting and discussed plans for killing Jesus. Jesus, God's chosen servant. But Jesus knew what they were planning. He left that area, and many people followed him. He healed all the sick among them, but he warned them not to say who he was. This fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah concerning him. Look at my servant whom I have chosen. He is my beloved, and I am very pleased with him. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not fight or shout. He will not raise his voice in public. He will not crush those who are weak or quench the smell of hope until he brings full justice with his final victory. And his name will be the hope of all the world. Jesus and the Prince of Demons. Then a demon-possessed man, who was both blind and unable to talk, was brought to Jesus. He healed the man so that he could both speak and see. The crowd was amazed. Could it be that Jesus is the son of David, the Messiah? They wondered out loud. But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, No wonder he could cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the Prince of Demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, Any kingdom at war with itself is doomed. A city or home divided against itself is doomed. And if Satan is casting out Satan, he is fighting against himself. His own kingdom will not survive. And if I am empowered by the prince of demons, what about your own followers? They cast out demons too, so, will they, so they will judge you for what you have said. But if I am casting out demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. Let me illustrate this. You can't enter a strong man's house and rob him without first tying him up. Only then can his house be robbed. Anyone who isn't helping me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Every sinner and blasphemy can be forgiven, except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which can never be forgiven. Anyone who blasphemies against me, the Son of Man, can be forgiven. But blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, either in this world or in the world to come. A tree is identified by its fruit. Make a, make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. You brood of snakes. How could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. A good, a good person produces good words from a good heart, and an evil person produces evil words from an evil heart. And I tell you this, that you must give an account on Judgment Day of every idle word you speak. The words you say now reflect your fate then. Either you'll be justified by them, or you'll be condemned. The Sign of Jonah one day, some teachers of religious law and Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we want you to show us a miraculous sign to prove that you are from God. But Jesus replied, Only an evil, faithless generation would ask for a miraculous sign, but the only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so I, the Son of Man, will be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. 
The people of Nineveh will rise up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now someone greater than Jonah is here, and you refuse to repent. The Queen of Sheba will also rise up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it because she came from a distant land to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And now someone greater than Solomon is here, and you refuse to listen to him. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert, seeking rest but finding none. Then it says, I'll return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds its former home, empty, swept, and clean. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. And so that person is worse off than before. That will be the experience of this evil generation, the true family of Jesus. As Jesus was speaking to the crowd, his mother and brothers were outside wanting to talk with him. Someone told Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside and they want to speak to you. Jesus asked, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Then he pointed to his disciples and said, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. That is all for today's reading. We'll see you tomorrow.